Hello, my name is Melissa Mara Alvarez and I'm the Curator of Education and Research at the Museum at FIT. In this video, I will examine a number of Euro-American women's fashion accessories from the museum's collection that date between 1900 and 2000. I focus primarily on hats, shoes, and handbags. Please be sure to check out the companion video with my colleague, Elizabeth Way, who highlights MFIT's 19th century accessories. Thank you. Throughout the 20th century, women's fashion accessories played a vital role in expressing a personal, fashionable identity. However, these items also communicated larger ideas relating to class, gender, modernity, race, and sexuality amid a rapidly changing 20th century society. So then how have fashion accessories changed during this time? And what do these stylistic changes reveal about women's roles in society? Let's have a look. The term new woman was a term introduced at the close of the 19th century. It was used to refer to the woman who enjoyed a new level of independence, challenging traditions with both her lifestyle and her dress. Her fashion included menswear inspired tailored garments, practical leather boots, and straw boater hats. The new woman worked, cycled, and played sports. Her age, class, race, and ethnicity varied, and her sartorial style accommodated her various pursuits. In spite of this trend towards sartorial simplicity at the turn of the century, elaborate styles prevailed. This was evident in the popularity of intricate lace lingerie dresses worn with accompanying accessories as formal day wear. Hats in particular became the most prominent feature of women's fashion. Massive displays of ribbons, flowers, and plumes embellished women's hats, some of which reached up to two feet in diameter. At times, entire birds nested atop a stylish woman's head. The rarer the bird, the more valuable its feathers, and thus, the higher the status projected by the wearer. As a result, demand for feathers increased. Heron, egret, and osprey plumes were especially coveted millinery trims and their high demand ultimately led to the endangerment of these species. Consequently, women's fashions, particularly those with feathered accessories, came under sharp criticism. This was highlighted in satirical illustrations with disdainful references to the dead bird wearing gender or the woman behind the gun. World War I accelerated the changes to women's lifestyles that had begun at the turn of the century. With men called to duty, women took on an increasingly active role in society. This precipitated changes to women's wardrobes. Guided by increasing simplicity and functionality, a slim vertical silhouette replaced the sinuous curves of Edwardian fashion, and hemlines began to rise to facilitate greater ease of movement. Although extravagance was considered distasteful during this period, women were still encouraged to look stylish. Accessories offered an accessible way to enliven wardrobes. Black was widely worn due to increased numbers of women in mourning. Dark fabric handbags that were embellished with colorful embroideries or subtle patterns became a popular, not to mention practical, handbag style for the discerning woman. Hats gradually became smaller and less ornate, foreshadowing the fashionable cloche styles that would become the height of fashion during the 1920s. The period's rising hemlines brought about an emphasis on footwear that would continue well into the 1920s and 30s. Shoes in a variety of styles featured an elongated toe, highlighting the elegance of a shapely ankle. The streamlined silhouette of the 1920s was emphasized by straight lines and shorter skirts. By 1926, hemlines shockingly rose to just below the knee. These simple silhouettes lent themselves to embellishment, and accessories became vital components of the new streamlined aesthetic. For the post-war flapper, the name for an independent woman who broke with social conventions, fashion accessories underscored her modern lifestyle. Items such as evening headbands, cigarette holders, bright feathered fans, beaded purses, and stylized compacts symbolized the flapper's freedom from social conventions and became potent symbols of her modernity. 
Some handbags were designed with coordinating compacts and cigarette cases, signaling the prominence of wearing makeup and smoking, practices previously considered improper for women. Hats, like the soft, low cloche style, hug the skull and cover the forehead, enhancing the recent innovation of short, bobbed hairstyles. With hemlines at their highest heights, fanciful shoes with statement-making heels also became a symbol of the modern era. Rogues, Oxfords, and spectators with low heels were widely worn during the day. However, T-strap styles also became popular. The shoe designer Andre Perugia gained a reputation for his experimental and luxurious styles during this period and continued creating innovative footwear into the 1960s. By the 1930s, fashion accessories favored abstraction and striking geometric designs reflected a contemporary interest in art deco. Although gloves were an important fashion accessory throughout the 19th century, their importance began to decline by the 1960s. However, during the 1930s, gloves for day and evening still received attention from the fashion press. A luxurious evening pair by Chanel, or stylish gauntlet gloves from the Galerie Lafayette, a luxury department store in Paris, combined fashion with function. During the Great Depression, Hollywood had a significant influence on fashion and fashion accessories as people sought to escape in the cinema. Certain hat styles were popularized by actresses such as the slouch hat, made fashionable by Greta Garbo, and Marlene Dietrich's menswear-inspired fedoras. During this period of economic hardship, hats were versatile accessories that could alter the formality of an ensemble. Novel shapes such as this turban-inspired bow design by milliner Lily Dashay, or this Robin Hood-style hat, expanded the range of fashionable looks. Historical revival styles, such as a heart-shaped brooch made to resemble a military medal or a purse disguised as a muff, provided a sartorial escape. World War II created opportunities for women outside the home. Out of both necessity and patriotism, high numbers of women entered the workforce and joined the volunteer services, activities that altered their mode of dress. Rosie the Riveter boiler suits, for example, became a symbol of women's patriotic wartime contributions, and broad-shouldered suits became a wardrobe staple of the 1940s woman. Handbags, in particular, became essential daily items as increased numbers of women entered the workforce. Inspired by wartime messenger bags, handbags with deep pouches and shoulder straps were a practical alternative to clutches. Fashion accessories also served as effective propaganda during World War II. Items such as shoes and scarves exhibiting patriotic themes were morale boosters. Women looked to accessories to brighten the period's modest clothing and transition an outfit from day to evening. Accessories such as this whimsical brooch also became a playful way to personalize otherwise austere wartime fashion. During the war, Shortages of material and strict rationing systems meant limited resources were available for fashion. Because millinery materials were one of the few unrestricted luxuries, hats and related headwear such as turbans experienced renewed interest. Wartime accessories made innovative use of available materials. For example, cork and wood platforms were used to raise shoes to some of their highest heights while cotton and elastic straps for footwear became an inventive replacement for leather. A renewed interest in traditional handcrafted techniques made items such as this novelty basket bag a desired accessory. This handbag is fashioned from thin splints of wood, a technique traditionally developed by the Algonquin Indians who are known for their intricately woven split ash baskets. After World War II, French couturiers were promoted as fashion's undisputed leaders. Opulence and luxury returned to design, due in large part to Christian Dior's ultra-feminine New Look silhouette, which featured a cinched waist and full skirt. Shoe designer Roger Vivier is credited with introducing the stiletto heel. He often worked with Dior, designing shoes for his couture collections. Vivier's slender, Pointed toe shoes complemented Christian Dior's exaggeratedly feminine silhouettes. 
Many couturiers designed or licensed coordinating accessories to accompany their garments. Matching accessories, such as this clutch handbag and shoes, underscored a sense of propriety and order that was prevalent in post-war society. After the war, many women returned to the domestic sphere and traditional gender roles. Occasion dressing re-emerged and, with it, the popularity of cocktail parties. These were often held at home and requisite accessories, such as hats and gloves, reinforced the formalities of a post-war society. However, a sportier, relaxed style embodied by the American look was also prevalent. This look was epitomized in designs by Claire McArdle that combined comfort with a casual elegance. McArdle popularized ballet flats after approaching the dancewear company Capizio in the 1940s to make shoes to match her dresses. These sensible shoes communicated American sartorial practicality and remain a staple in many women's wardrobes even today. By the end of the decade, a minimalist aesthetic, which prioritized clean lines and geometric simplicity, inspired a number of inventive shoe designs. American designer Beth Levine, designing under her husband's name, took a minimalist approach to footwear to new extremes with these shoes that anchored to the wearer's feet with only adhesive pads. By the 1960s, a burgeoning teenage culture blossomed into the youthquake revolution that influenced fashion. British designer Mary Quant's London look targeted the young adult market with mini skirt styles that became emblematic of the youth culture. A number of boutiques catered to youth-oriented style tribes like the Mods, who found sartorial liberation in items such as bright opaque tights and colorful patent leather flats. The now iconic space age look of couturier Andre Courage relied on accessories such as a helmet hat, plastic eclipse sunglasses, and white leather boots to convey his fashion forward aesthetic. Synonymous with youth, these space age accessories expressed an optimism for technology and an idealized future. Accessories were also vital to the sartorial expression of the hippie counterculture. They prioritized natural materials, handcrafted work, and multicultural looks that conveyed their social and political values. During the 70s, an emerging sense of freedom to wear what one wanted encouraged numerous trends and style tribes to coexist. Fashion accessories in the MFIT collection from this period range from sculptural minimalist jewelry by Elsa Peretti, to retro 1930s and 40s inspired platforms, to glam rock styles. By the 1980s, accessories also expressed women's growing equality and financial independence as they transitioned into higher echelons of the workforce. A clutch purse featuring a cover from Working Woman magazine or a pair of menswear-inspired Oxford heels designed by Yves Saint Laurent promoted ideas of authority and gender equality. 1980s was a decade that saw designer labels grow in power and influence. Paired with the decade's power suits, a handbag from a luxury label such as Gucci, or a pair of heels by Charles Jordan, served as prominent symbols of success that could convey a woman's financial independence. Designer accessories became a conspicuous way to flaunt an aspirational lifestyle. Handbags, such as Judith Lieber's rhinestone-encrusted Minaudieres, were, according to one socialite, big enough to accommodate a lipstick, a comb, and a $100 bill. The popularity of statement-making accessories bolstered a renewed interest in costume jewelry. The importance of jewelry during the 1980s is highlighted in this sequin top by Bill Blass, embroidered with Trump Loy strands of pearls. The reference pays homage to costume jewelry styles popularized by Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Sunglasses were a new must-have accessory, as hidden eyes became an essential part of conveying 1980s glamour. Designers were quick to promote their own unique styles, such as this pair by Patrick Kelly, accented with playing dice. Hats and fanciful headwear became audacious fashion statements. British milliner Stephen Jones gained a reputation for his inventive hats through his association with the New Romantics, a 1980s music-oriented subculture that encouraged an escapist, gender-fluid, dressed-up aesthetic. As the decade wore on, a host of youth-oriented style tribes influenced fashion. In fact, fashion accessories were both an accessible and visible way to proclaim group allegiance to a particular tribe. 
a pair of quirky denim boots, for example, could express eccentric new wave style, just as a pair of sturdy Doc Martens were emblematic of 90s grunge. Within hip hop culture, fashion accessories such as gold chains, hats, and sneakers were integral to personalizing a look. As hip hop gained mainstream popularity in the 1990s, these styles were appropriated by high fashion designers such as Karl Lagerfeld and Manolo Blahnik, who offered aspirational accessories that were coveted by many. With the emergence of the internet, a worldwide consciousness developed. The 1990s emphasis on multiculturalism was expressed by an eclectic mix of worldly styles, as designers were influenced by a wide range of cultures outside the Euro-American sphere. While these accessories were intended to celebrate diverse cultures, they sometimes skirted the line between appreciation and cultural appropriation, raising issues of identity politics. In contrast to the conspicuous consumption of the 1980s, 90s fashion embraced minimalist and conceptual approaches to dressing. Fashion accessories, such as Prada's nylon backpack, became emblematic of the decade's understated luxury. An avant-garde experimental approach to fashion was adopted by some designers. Martin Margiela's weathered-looking tabi boots, which were inspired by the split toe of Japanese tabi socks, presented a conceptual and deconstructed approach to fashion accessories. As the new millennium approached, shoes and handbags dominated as the most coveted accessories, a concept reinforced by popular culture through fashion magazines and television shows such as Sex and the City. Shoe designs in particular were becoming more imaginative. By the end of the decade, shoe designers Manolo Blahnik and Christian Louboutin had earned cult celebrity status. Debuting in 1997, Fendi's coveted baguette was the first handbag to earn the title of It Bag. Soon, other handbags, such as this Louis Vuitton Speedy Monogram, a collaboration with the artist Takeshi Murakami, earned its status, thus reinforcing this cultural phenomenon. Over the past two centuries, fashion accessories have maintained the power to communicate vital information about women's lives and their roles in society. Today, Accessories are some of the most lucrative products sold by fashion houses as they continue to express ideas of modernity and change in a continually evolving world.